Let's welcome tonight's very, very special guest. I've known her so long. Do you want to know how long I've known her? I was part of her very first match ever. <laughs> Former ECW, WWE diva, the one and only Dawn Marie. Dawn, mwah, welcome. I love you. <laughs> oh, you're the best. So happy to be here. I've been watching your shows, and they're awesome. I don't really um, wow. dabble too much with wrestling anymore, but I do watch yours. Um, I'm really, I love it. I love it because you're keeping it old school, man. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Tell tell the world, I, me and Crowbar was your first match ever. Well, actually, I think it was the second. What? It was. I'm sorry. Oh. I got to correct really? you. Oh, no. My first match ever was um, Jimmy Snuka. I managed Jimmy Snuka with Tony Atlas against Tony Atlas. Stop it. Yeah. For, I was like, 20, I was like, for 30 years, I've been telling the whole world I was your first match. And don't worry about it. <laughs> you were my second at the high school. Mm hmm. Right? Was that where it was? It was up, up there, up north, at high school. Yeah, it was uh, Maccabee Mania 2. That's it. That was my second. Second match. I'll give you credit for my number two. <laughs> Good. I'm perfect. <laughs> um, but but what would make what would make you want to get involved in, in indie wrestling or professional wrestling in general? There weren't the spots and there wasn't the money back then that there is now. Now women are women are on there's three three women's matches on Raw every week. I I can't. Um, it's like so depressing <laughs> because um, you know, like I always did it because I loved it. You know, I kind of fell into it by accident. Um, I used to do a lot of modeling and acting when I was younger, when I was going to school, and I, you know, I just you know Spencer posters. Remember Spencer back in the day? They have Spencers anymore? Those oh in yeah, the in the mall, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, they had those like cheesy posters and stuff. I used to do those. I used to be on those. Really? Yeah. So when I was, you know, I had a great job. I got, I finished school. I was, I was going to be a, a director of international real estate firm in Manhattan. I was like, all right, that's it. It didn't happen, you know? Okay. I had fun doing whatever I did at the time. And so I knew a gentleman. And he had a bunch of posters. And he was like, can, I, can you just sign them up? I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever. Come on over. Come, you know, come to my house. Come do it. You know me. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. So um, as I'm signing, I never knew that he was involved. Like, he used to do, like, indie stuff back in the day. Remember when Vince used to run small local shows? Like, sure. little ones. Earth Amboy and the little ones, right? So he used to help promote those. I never knew it. So when he's at my house and I'm signing up, he tells me these stories. I'm like, no way. And he's like, yeah. I, he's like, are you a wrestling fan? I was like, well, I haven't watched it in years, but geez, of course. Like that was our thing. That was our thing. MSG, you know, I, I grew up very poor. So it was like, I would start cleaning a house right before WrestleMania so that I could beg my father. <laughs> I did all these extra chores, please. <laughs> you know. Um, and I was just sitting there talking with him, and I was like, oh my God, that'd be so awesome. I could be like the next next Miss Elizabeth. Right. You know, like seriously. I, but you know, we're so stupid. So he took me serious. I was not serious. He was not. So like a couple of weeks later, he called me up. And he's like, Dawn, I got you on a small show. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you said that you wanted to be like Elizabeth. You wanted to try wrestling. I go, I was only joking. And I was like, you know, I just talk to talk. <laughs> and, Who is this? Who are you talking about? Jonathan. Jonathan. His name is Jonathan. John Gold? John Gold. Oh, I know John Gold. Yeah, of course. John Gold got me into, into wrestling. Actually, John was the first. He got me into it. Got it. So, um, anyway, he, he's like, Dawn, I, I called it a favor. Like, he, can you just do this one then? Because I thought you were serious. I go, oh my God. All right. All right. Let me figure something out. So it was Cousin Luke's uh, show. 
And I walk in. Now, mind you, I watched it maybe 15 years prior, right? 10 years prior, maybe even longer. And here I do, I walk in the locker room and they're like, oh, you're working with Jimmy Snooker. I'm like, what? And then they tell me, oh, well, with, with, uh, against Tony. I was like, you gotta be shit. Right? I'm like, wow. no, because they were the people, you know, the men back right. the from when I was watching. So that was my first match. And I, I managed, um, I managed Jimmy and it was awesome. I can remember, um, well, I can see the whole place right now. I've been on a lot of arenas, right? So like, I remember walking out that curtain and everything just went slow. You ever see those, those sequences in movies and like, right. whoa, and everything was slow. I could tell you how many rows were there. I could tell you everything. It was like, right. oh my God. I was like, this is what I'm supposed to do for the rest of my life. This is what I'm supposed to do. That was a Friday. On Monday, I called my boss in New York. I'm like, I was a director of an international real estate firm. I was like, Patty, I'm sorry, but I'm not coming back. Wow. That's how I was so impactful, you know? Like, it was just like, I just knew. I just knew. I was like, oh my, oh my God, this is it. And she's, and then she said to me, go on. Because she actually hired me out of school. She was one of my professors. So... She's like, Dawn, we'll talk about it. Come on in. We're going to talk. I said, Patty, I love you. Thank you. I'm going to be a real ass right now. But I can't come in because you're going to talk me out of it. Wow. So she's like, well, what are you, what are you going to do with all your licenses and your books? And your, I go, throw them out. I'm never coming back. <laughs> wow. That's how committed I was. That's how moved I was. And I was like, Oh my God. Like, Dawn, you're really making them say, because, you know, I went to NYU business school. I was like, up the Olympic Towers overlooking St. Patrick's Cathedral. I had a corner office. I could watch the parade down Fifth Avenue. You think that's it, you know, like, oh, that, you make right. it. No, I quit like that. And I went back to the bars. I went back to, I pulled up all my old jobs. Can you see me? Okay. And then oh, yeah. um, I went back to the bars, got my old jobs back. And that was it. And that was it. And I just traveled up and down the coast. 25 bucks, 50 bucks. If I was lucky, you know, I would drive through the night, sleep at hotels during the day, like little motel eights or whatever, because I was afraid to do it at night. And I would go anywhere from Michigan to, to Florida by myself. Just pump, you know, pounding away, pounding away. And then, um, you know, I, I got on the Kasadi train. <laughs> <laughs> and then Kasadi cut it, you know, he expanded me out more because he would start flying us places. And it was me, Missy, the bangers, Tom's, Tom, um, Tom Sincere, South Sincere, Tom. Tom Brady. And um, I did that and I met. Um, I met um, George Napolitano mm -hmm. and Bill Lecter. Mm -hmm. And they, I'm going to tell you right now, if it wasn't for them, I would have never, ever made it. I truly believe that. Because you could spin your wheels all day long, right? Yeah. But if no one sees you, they don't know you're there. Right. And they said to me, like, you have something. And we're, you know, each one, and they didn't do it together. Like they both like said it to me at different times and they made sure I was in every single magazine from that point. There was no <laughs> internet back then. Hmm? Yeah, there, there was no internet back then. You had to be in the magazines. You had to be in the magazine. You had hmm. to. And every single month they put me somewhere in their magazine. They found something to put me in. And honest to God, I, that I don't think I would have ever made it without them, because you know it doesn't matter how talent you are, how talented you are, or you know that comes after you're hired, <laughs> and that matters. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. like if they, if they don't know you're there, then you know, especially women. Right. Yeah. How'd you get on ECW's radar? 
Oh, I did a Jersey All Pro show. Mm-hmm. Um, and I never knew this until years later how they found me. Paul told me. I did a Jersey All Show Pro, uh, Jersey All Pro, and Bubba was there with Paul. And I guess they were just like looking around, watching for scouting for people. I didn't know. I didn't even know they were there. And um, Paul saw me. And Bubba saw me. And a lot of time went by. And then Marlena was supposed to go to ECW, Terry, supposed to go to ECW because she was released or she was going to be released. And then last minute, they worked out a deal with Vince so she couldn't come. Like literally the day out, like a day before kind of thing. And she was supposed to go into a program with Tammy fresh off of WWE, right? So now they're like, well, what do we do? So they called me because I'm local. And Bubba called and he said, hi, you know, this is Bubba, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, hi, how are you? He said, um, you want to come down to Philly and, you know, try out, do a match? Why don't you come down here and talk to us? And I was like, oh, okay, wow. You know, and then I'm like, I didn't know what to do. Because it was, the business was so different then. You know, you, you, gotta, you had to watch how you sneezed. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, so I was like, yeah, okay. Well, when? He goes, at four o'clock. And I'm like, <laughs> o'clock in the morning. 10 right. o'clock in the morning. You need to be in Philly by four o'clock if you want a chance. Dude, I was so scared because it was the arena. You know, we all heard the stories. So scary. I'm all over for Simon. Well, Pat at the time, Kenny, because I didn't know what to do. I was so scared. I didn't know what to say, what to do. I couldn't find him. And I just went. I just went. I was like, screw it. And I went down there and that was it. And they asked me to get my dress torn off. But back then that was a no, no. Remember? Cause ooh, I got, you know, and I was scared. I was like, Oh my God, I could totally ruin myself. Like, what do I do? I right. can't say no, but I can't say yes. And then I'm thinking about buddy Landell. Cause he, was on the Tom, Tom Casati train with us, and he taught me so much, so much. Oh, and I buddy. just, ah, uh, I love that man. But what he would say to me, because you know he never let me in the ring when I managed him with Tom Casati for the longest time. He said, "You stand on the outside. Said, I'll let you know when you just when you've earned the right to step in this ring." Yeah. So for wow a long time and like all the other managers would go in even if they were in our match and he said learn to get over on the outside before you're allowed to get on the inside he's like you have to earn it and i did finally i got into the ring and he used to say to me you as a wrestler you're hired to do a job like Whatever they need you to do, you do it. You're not supposed to have an opinion about it. You don't do, just do, you're hired to do the best you can at whatever they're asking you to do. I mean, obviously within reason, you know, not a sure. porn star in the middle, but you <laughs> don't, <laughs> you know, right. That's your job. That's what we do. That's how you respect the, the business is you go in there and you do it to the best of your ability and don't have an, opinion. you're not allowed to have an opinion about it. Just do it. And that's all I kept hearing was Buddy when I was at the ECW arena. And then I just said, sure, no problem. Whatever you need me to do, I'm here. <laughs> that was it. That was my answer. And Bubba was like, whoa, because I was bro- broken in hard. Missy Hyatt right. broke real hard. And yeah, I had Buddy, you know, I, they, they made me, <laughs> they did some horrible things to me. <laughs> <laughs> but mm-hmm. Yeah, it is what it is, but I'm glad they did. What did you think of Tammy? How would you get along with her? I love Tammy. I love 
Tammy. Tammy has always had a special spot in my heart. Um, I didn't really know her before ECW. Um, so in the beginning, I didn't really have a relationship with her, but I knew I, I needed to make it work. I knew this was my shot, right? Mm-hmm. And I ended up loving her. Tammy was never any of the things that you hear to me. Always aces. And, um, it, you know, it's sad what's happened. It's more sad for the family that has someone to pass away. But, you know, it's so funny. Like, life is just so weird, right? It's so crazy. One day you're on top, one day you're here, one day you're there. She was at my house the month before she got arrested, before that happened. Because I had, a, a you know, some people over. So, I don't know. It was just so sad. It's just sad to me, the whole thing. So it's, it's, it's crazy whenever I'm talking and Tammy comes up. I say the same thing. I say, I grew up in New Jersey. I've known Tammy since 1992. I've been in her presence probably a hundred times at shows. I've been to her house when she was here for barbecues with my wife. I have never one time for one minute have seen the bad Tammy. Not, not once. Me I've either. never seen it. She's oh, again, I've been around a hundred times. I've never, I, I, I could not say a single bad thing about Tammy, how she's ever, ever, ever treated me, treated my wife, treated anyone when, when I was around her ever person. She really is. I mean, that's the side I saw, right? And people always be like, oh, be careful because, you know, you're in a ring with her. It's always different when you have a program. with her. She was so giving to me. She really was. And then when her, she started having some problems, you know, she was getting into the drugs really bad and the drinking, like, I hid it a lot for her. Like, when I would help her get dressed, I would help, you know, like, I would kind of you know, she was my friend. And also at the yeah. same time, I had to make it work. I had to make sure it got worked, you know, it got right. done. So a little of both, really. But, you know, it just breaks my heart. You know, you know, I'm a nurse now, right? Right. I had her mom as one of my patients for a while. Wow. Yeah, it was so surreal. I remember I used to be, a, I was a manager and I was looking in the computer and I happened to look at someone else's floor or something. And I saw her name. I was like, oh, my God. And then, yeah, I called Tammy. I go, Tammy, is your mom here? She's like, yeah. So I had Tammy's mom before she died. Wow. So weird. So, so small. The world's so small. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But yeah. it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. Tammy worst enemy is Tammy until this last time like she never hurt anyone but herself until this time but she would she was her worst enemy you know she was her worst enemy she should be on she should be on an island somewhere and the island should be called Tammy (laughs) living you know living off of all the money she made can we trip over a log and hurt herself (laughs) <laughs> I'm saying she should be like, you know, living a great life right now, enjoying oh, yeah. all of her fame and fortune, but it stinks. Um, you know, what's... It changes with one choice. You're right. It does. It okay. just does. You just got to be careful of your choices. Yeah. Talk to me about the other women in ECW. Had you along with Beulah? Beulah wasn't there when I was there. Okay. No, it was only... Um, at the time was Tammy and Francine. And oh, oh, Chastity. Remember Chastity, little Chastity? Sure. I was there. Um, I got along really well with Chastity. Not so much. <laughs> Not at all. But, you know, and that I think that's why also Tammy loved me because when I right, there's two different types of people in this business. <laughs> One that will work really hard to be the best that they can be and always work to hone their skills. And then you have the other person that will work just as hard for your demise to get rid of you 
so that they're on top instead of working on themselves, right? You know that, right? You have one or the other. Sure. Well, Franny is the other. And, you know, she didn't want Tammy there. She did not want Tammy there because Tammy was the new big thing, you know, to come right off WWE. Right. That's when Tammy and I really bonded a lot was because, like, I would kind of shield her a lot, you know, from anything. So, and, and actually, I became friends with a lot of girls in the industry because of that. When they would come through ECW, um, you know, the claws would come out and I'd be like, ah, no, you're not. <laughs> no. So, any in particular stories with Francine? Anything stand out? Like something that you guys got into an argument about? God, how many? <laughs> but this, is, this is the thing. This is what happened. When we were at ECW, we never argued because I had to just eat shit sandwiches all the time. You know what I mean? I had to just, right. that was it. I, and I just took it, took it, and took it. Like we would talk, we would talk over a match, and she would refer to me to my face as she, her, and it. Can you tell it that it? Uh, all right. And um, I was like, "This is crazy," and, but I just had to take it. I had to. I had to do it. It ate me up. It killed me. You know. Um. To me, just pure evil. To me, pure evil. I'm sorry. I, I, she's really the only person I talk badly about. You know? Um, and I've told her to her face. Because after ECW, when I had nothing to lose anymore. Right. You know? Like, the last time I saw her was the ECW show for WWE. Right? And I was pregnant. And, you know, I'm old school. You came to my locker room, regardless of how I feel about you. I'm going to welcome you into my locker room. I'm not going to be a douche. Like, right. I'm the pro. That's what you do, right? right? You go over and you welcome, shake their hand, make them feel welcome, whatever. Well, I went to go shake. I go, hi, Franny. How you doing? I put my hand out. And she goes like this and moves her hand away. I snatched her hand so fast and I pulled her close to my face. And I was like, once a douchebag, always a fucking douchebag. I'm sorry, I might not be able to curse. You can whatever you want. Once a douchebag, always a fucking douchebag. I was like, you know, the only reason why you did that is because I'm pregnant right now. But one day I won't be. And I just threw her hand back down and I walked away. This is just disgusting. Disgusting. Right. I mean, come on. They've grown up. Right? But whatever. Wow. You know, it is what it is. But that's why, you know, you got to be careful of the people you screw with on the way up because they're always waiting for you when you're on your way back down, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Had you long, Paul? Paul? Oh, Paul's yeah. my. I love Paul. To this day, like Paul is my, like, he's my person. He's like my other half. Like, I love Paul. Paul's my bestest of friends. Um, we always had a very special connection. We always had a special friendship. Um, Paul's the person I always went to that would, that would, cause he knew the good, bad and the ugly. He knows everything there is to know about me. Everything. Even when I was like younger, like. That's how close we are. Like, he's the person that will say, Dawn, stop. You're da da da. You're being an idiot. You know, not like you stop it. You're you're hurting yourself, you know, whatever he says, or whatever. He says it nicely, but it's not. <laughs> you know, and like he's just honest with me, you know, and, and when I'm right, he got my back to the end of time, you know. But if I'm wrong, he's going to tell me. And I appreciate that. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I call him my person. He's my person through my whole life. There. 
I talk to him like, you know, I talk to him all the time, you know, I, I probably you, would be broken if I didn't. <laughs> can you give me some wrestling advice that Paul gave you that stuck with you throughout your whole career? Oof. You know, what Paul did, his genius is he never told anyone what to do. Paul's genius is that he could look at somebody and watch them in a ring, know their strengths and weaknesses, and then he emphasizes them. Mm-hmm. And when you emphasize someone's strengths, you start to become more confident. Because now you're like, wow, okay, I'm good in my space. And then at the same time, you work on the things that aren't like a little shaky so, till they catch up. But that's what he would do, you know? Yeah. And he would always say to me, because I would do spike work. And he was just like, Dawn, just don't be scared. Just go out there and believe in your instincts. Just believe you have great instincts. Just do it. He's like, I believe in you. Your instincts are awesome, you know, or whatever you use the word. Just trust them. And it'll be great. And when you have someone saying that to you, how do you not succeed? Because you're not in your own head. You're just doing. Right, right. He did. That's his genius. Look what he did with Balls Mahoney and this one and that. Like everyone had their own flair because he let everyone be their own individual self. Right. And he showcased it. And, um, you know, that's just amazing to me that, he, you know, he's really, people say some bad things, you know, now they're on the back wagon, like, oh, because he's so great and he's doing wonderful. And I'm so, I love him and I'm proud of him. But, you know, like, he made a lot of people's lives, he took care of a lot of people. He gave a lot of people opportunities. You know, um, what you did with that, that's that's on you. Right. But think about it. You know, here in New Jersey, on the, on the you know, tri-state, I would say he's given most of us a chance at some, you know, if you were, you know, whatever. You had that, that option, you know, because he was at the indie shows watching. He was scouting all the time. You have to have respect for that. Right. You know, listen, people screw up. People make mistakes. Life isn't always perfect. But you can't judge someone based on their last performance. I don't want that to be happening. I don't want that to happen to me. I will never do it to anyone else. And to me, I, I am not, I, I adore him. You know, he's my person. He's my person. That's all I can Were say. There- Were you there to the end? Yeah. Yeah, I was. Um, Lance left. Um, I was talking to them about going to WCW. And I thought about it. And so I went to, we were in Canada. And I said, Paul, I need to talk to you because I just couldn't take Franny anymore. I couldn't take her. Actually, Joey Styles saw me all the way at the end of the, uh, the end of the hallway, crying. Like, what's wrong? I'm like, I just can't do it anymore because Lance wasn't there. I didn't have any allies, right? Right. Can't. I just. I, it's I can't. And he, <laughs> Joey Styles goes, kick the shit out of her. And I was at that time talking, you know, with that WCW. And so I remember I was walking up and I saw Paul. I said, Paul, I need to talk to you. He's like, what's wrong? Because I guess he saw my eyes were red, you know. I said, I need to talk to you privately. So we go into a room and he says to me, no, Paul says, okay, when you're leaving, <laughs> you know, 
And I said, I'm not. I said, but I want you to know why I'm not. Okay. I said, that's why I'm calling you in here. I'm not going to leave until my, I have another year and a half left on my contract. I said, at that time, I will look and see what is for my best interest. Right. It's like, but I gave you my word. He gave you my word that I would be here for three years. Times are rough. I can get out of my contract in two seconds right now. But people aren't only as good as their last performance. He gave me a chance. He believed in me when no one else did. For Christ's sake, he took me out of the strip joint. You know, I was stripping back then. And I remember I signed my first contract. He's like, what do you need? to come on a contract. I said, take me out of the bar. That's exactly what I said. I said, take me out of the bar. And he goes, well, what's the bare minimum you need? And I told him a number and he says, as of next week, that's what you get. How, you, you, to me, I'm loyal. No, right. but I said to him this, I said, Paul, I just want you to know, I'm not leaving, but I'm not leaving because I drank the Kool-Aid. I'm not leaving because I'm like a loyalist or whatever they want to call it or, it, you know, stupid or a follower, whatever. I said, I didn't drink the Kool-Aid. I said, I'm going to be on. I'm going to stay true to my word. I gave you three years. We have another year and a half. Wherever this road takes us, I got you. Good, bad, and ugly. And I did. I stayed with him. And um, that's just the, that's just how we are, you know. Right. With me, and then, <laughs> and then he goes, "What's going?" And then we went to the curtain because I had to go out soon, and I took my shoes off. I had to do a run in, and he looks at me. He goes, "What are you doing?" Because I don't know if people really realize I never took my shoes off. When I would go into a spot, I, I that's like my pet peeve is when girls take their shoes off prior to jumping into the ring to do a spot. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm behind the curtain and I took my shoes off. And he goes, what are you doing? I said, oh, I'm going to beat the shit out of her. <laughs> <laughs> Did he so, know there was there was heat with you guys? Oh, everybody. <laughs> Every, oh, no, it was no secrets. There were no secrets N at all. She made it very clear that she did not like me. So he's like, oh, cool. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> I won't ruin your show, but I'm going to kick the shit out of her today. I'm done. Because think about it. I had an offer to go somewhere else. What are you going to do? Fire me? Right. Right? You need to keep our talent. Like, it was just the, the perfect storm where I was like, Sky, so you want to fire me? I'll go there. Like, I, I just told you I'm loyal to you. Like, dude, what do you want me to do? Right. So I did. I went out there and I beat the shit out of her. Like, so. <laughs> Maybe I did ruin the show a little bit. <laughs> what happened when you got in the back? It was a three-way. It was Jerry Lynn, uh, Justin Credible, and Steve Carino. Okay. I think we were in Canada. I believe we were in Canada. And we did our cat fight, but grab, I was just grabbed the back of my head. I was just like this. No, no cat fight. It was like on the ground, you know. Pull me off or whatever, roll a little bit, make it look good. Right. I was pissed. I was, I was like, I'm done. And then they they literally took me off her. <laughs> and I was like, I just as soon as they let go, I went back and I got her again. Back down to the cat fight. You know, and it was so funny <laughs> because poor Simon. Simon was sitting up there 
next to Tommy at the time. And it was what it was, right? And, and Tommy's like, um, Pat? <laughs> and he goes, I, I don't know. He's like, I felt so uncomfortable. Right. Like, never felt so uncomfortable in a locker room. <laughs> oh, that's me. It has nothing to do with you. What happened when you got in the back? Okay, so when I came to the back, I'm waiting for us to go at it. Right? Like, right. it's on. There's no way. Someone did that. Right. Forget I'm waiting. Right? <laughs> Come to the curtain. Everyone starts clapping. <laughs> Everyone starts clapping. You know, you're watching the monitor. They're you know, like, it's about time. Like, even her, people that were her friends, like, on a professional wrestling business wise, like even if you didn't like me more or whatever, I'm not asking you to choose, but it was just, they had respect for me. Cause for the first time I'm like, you know what? No more. Right. Done. And um, so then I walk in the back and I'm like, okay, where's she going to jump out of something? <laughs> you know? right. Never said another word to me. Never, never even came near me again after that. Which I'm fine with, except for when, you know, years later when, you know, whatever. But yeah, mm. never referred to me as she, her, and it again. Sure. But I did that That's for it. two, she, her, and Right. And I took my cut. So. I How had you, a, say again? I said I had a career, she didn't. Had you started negotiating with WWE? Okay, so at that time, ECW was defunct. And I didn't know how to wrestle. But the girls were now going bell to bell. At, EC at WWE. Like, you know, you had your Trish Stratuses, your Lita's, you know, everyone was there. And I only knew how to bump. Because that's what I used. That's what they taught me at ECW. I used to go up to the, the the hardcore gym in Long Island, and they would teach me. So I had to learn. I was in my thirties. I was like 29, 30 years old, and I had to learn how to wrestle. And I would drive all the way up to Long Island to Mikey Whipwreck School and train. And learn how to wrestle. Pat would come with me sometimes, most times, and just teach me how to wrestle as much as I can, right? And sometimes we would go down to Kettner School, um, wherever. I didn't like Gino Caruso's school because his was like, like bumping on the floor. <laughs> yeah. Like, I would. <laughs> and it feels good anyway but you know i mean it was like a boxing ring or something you, you know you've been on his oh, ring yeah. right of course yeah a lot of a lot, i broke in at mike sharp school it was like falling on the floor yeah um but i was grateful he did give me his gym to whenever i wanted to work out he, you know i had a lot of really wonderful people in my corner that wanted to see me succeed and i was lucky i was blessed you know and then uh, Dina, you know, Dina Ford. I do. Her and I um, were friends. I met her on an indie show. We became friends. I was learning how to wrestle. And I said, um, listen, I trust you. You want to go around a circuit with me? You know, like, I'll take you with, you know, whatever. I'll get you booked. We'll wrestle. I need to get comfortable. And she was like, yeah, okay. So we did that. And I'm the one that introduced her to Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful babies now. Yes. <laughs> and um, I did. her and I became really close and I just did it. I just would go on indie shows and, and I would stink up the place and learn and, <laughs> and then just keep going. And then uh, Paul had said, you know, have you learned yet? Can you go a bell to bell? Can you do like four minutes, five minutes, you know? I was like, yeah, yeah. 
uh, kind of. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and he said, put it on tape. So I booked a show and I brought her with me and I, yeah, I sent it in and there we go. But this is a funny story that no one knows. A lot of people don't know. When they called me, they had asked me to go, to Lu- uh, to go down to Louisville. The they were the, what the developmental. Okay, who called you? Johnny Ace. Okay. And you know, I was in my thirties. You know, I had a house. I was always like ten years older than the other girls that I worked with. And you know, I had to turn it down. And it killed me. It killed me. I worked so hard. You know, here's your opportunity, but. I got a house I got to pay for. Like, I, I, I can't. Like, I'm not a kid. I, I'm by myself. Like, no. I, and I was so heartbroken. I was so heartbroken. It was the hardest decision I ever had to make. It wasn't even a decision. I had no choice. Right? And I told them. And then they called me back a week later. And they're like, okay, we're going to take you on the road. And we're going to see how you do. And, um, okay, no contract, just we're going to see how you do. Right. And I show up and one, of, you know, Dusty used to have his school, right? And of course, the other girl is Dusty's girl. Yeah. I'm like, God, what the hell am I going to do against those of Dusty's girls? <laughs> But I did, I, I, I worked hard and we did it and I tore my ligament in my ankle that weekend and I just said, tape it up, <laughs> just tape it up, we'll figure it out. And yeah, I got my job. What was your initial impression of Johnny Ace? I never had a problem with Johnny, mm-hmm. you know. I, you know, he, I, I really didn't have really an opinion of him. Um, I mean, he was, he was okay. You know, I, no bad, no good. No, you know, he was my boss. That was it. Um, you know, I hear all the stuff that's going on now. Um, what could I say? Only in wrestling? <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's what we used to say, right? When we were all on the Indies. Only in wrestling. <laughs> But I but he, was always, he was always professional with you. Yeah, it, it's so funny because when it first came out, the allegations a couple of years ago with Vince, I actually mm-hmm. called Paul. I'm like, Paul, what's mm-hmm. wrong with me? Why doesn't anyone hit on me when I was <laughs> like, money? You know, and he's like, God, they. You were too smart for them. They knew they would never get away with it with you. You like they missed the clear of you. I was like, damn it. <laughs> but now you hear uh, these I, and they didn't. You know, it's some well, scary what, stuff. What about Vince McMahon? How'd you get along with Vince? Awesome. You know, um, it was professional. He was always respectful. Um you know, you know, I've had my lawsuit with Vince afterwards and I had my own issues with Vince. But I have nothing, I, I almost feel like weird saying it, like on, when I worked with him, I had nothing but respect for him. You know, even even after the lawsuit, you know, business is just business. You, you got to just handle it. Um, and the reason why is, think about it, he ran this huge company he was at every tv okay the owner ceo whatever all of it and you know what i can knock on his door at any time if i had a question or a concern and i would be allowed in to talk about the wrestling <laughs> but you know right. like, you know he would i'm not saying i had 15 20 minutes you know, make your point, get out. But he always was available. 
And I had nothing but respect for that. And I feel like he never asked, at least me or anyone else that I saw, to do anything in the ring or any kind of storyline that he himself or his own family hasn't done similar, you know. So to me, I have respect for that, you know. Um, you know, he fired me when I was pregnant, you know, or because I was pregnant. That's a whole nother story. But again, I guess I'm just that person that we handled it. It was business and that's it. And then years later, I actually had to call Vince for something. Um, I, was, I had to tell him that Captain Lou had passed. His family wanted me to call him and I did. And it was so funny because it was the first time ever since the lawsuit. You know, and I walked out on Vince twice in mediation. <laughs> really? Did. Yeah. Well, he was. Wait, so you're, you're, I was going to ask you, you're, you're, at a, you're at a table, it's you and Vince for mediation? No, no. He had oh. like his lawyers. But I walked out twice. I was like, mm. that's a whole other story. So anyway. He, um, what was I going to say? Oh, I forgot. You called him for Cap Captain Lou. I called for Captain Lou and told him, and he's like, oh, okay. And then we were talking like about that. And he said, you know what, Dawn? He's like, I have more respect for you today than I did when you worked here. And I was like, oh, really, Vince? Why is that? The way you handled your business. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, Vince, you know what? I have more respect for you, too. <laughs> you actually followed through. <laughs> and you, the way you handled your business, you know? And we yeah. laughed, a good little laugh. And, you know, that was the olive branch. Right? right. It's just business. Um. Yeah, you know, it is what it is. But like, because at that time, it was like Geraldo and Nancy Grace and I don't know, a bunch of them, they were calling me. They all wanted me on their shows to, you know, shit on them. Right. But like, I would never shit on the business. Never. I would never. That's just how I was raised in the business. You don't shit on it. If I shit on a business, I'm shitting on everyone that came before me. How dare I? I can't do that. Um, so I just handled my business and that was it. I never went public. I never cried about it. I never, you know, no, no, I didn't want to do that. Did you ever see anything being close with the other divas, with the other girls? Did you ever see anything inappropriate happen between management and talent? No. Well, see it or hear? Two different things. That's two different things, yeah. Okay. Never, never um, saw anything? I never saw anything. There was a girl from the Diva Search, really nice girl. Um, and she would come to me for a lot of advice because she was getting calls from the main office. And she was just freaked out. And I said, I don't even know what, I've never had to, I, you always hear the stories, you know, whatever, but you think they're story. I, you don't know, right? You don't know the right, truth. Right, right, right. But then like when she was, I mean, she was, she was so scared and broken and she ended up leaving. But I, you know, I told her, I was like, you have to do you. You know, something you don't want to do and you don't feel comfortable. I don't judge you if you do. And I'm not going to judge you if you don't. You have to do you. And, and she ended up leaving. But because she didn't want to do, <laughs> you know, but I, yeah, I do. That's the only time I've ever encountered an issue was that one person because they came to me in confidence, you know, because she was freaking out. Young girl. But. Yeah. Never saw anything. Never saw anything. I'm dying to talk to you about 
the Al Wilson angle and Tori <laughs> Wilson. Uh, I was going to read this. Before I read this, talk to me about Al Wilson. Was That was legit Tori Wilson's father, correct? Yes, that was Tori's dad. That was her legit dad. Um, it made it for a little awkward. <laughs> but again, <laughs> you're hired to do a job. You right. don't have an You just do it. Just do it. You know, the best of your ability. That's what you're hired for. So, it, oh my God. We had so much fun. I had how so much fun. How did that even become a thing? Like, what... Whose idea was it? Hey, Tori, do you have a father? Did he show up? No, oh, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> who else would mastermind something like that? But like, how do they know Tori has this old father? Like, well, no, they gave her a choice. No, no, they gave her a choice. They said, you know, we could bring in an actor or we could use your real father. <laughs> That's great. And, you know, if you think your father will do it. And she's like, oh, that would be so awesome. You know, because she wanted to spend some time with her dad. And, um, you know, we, we don't have time with family or anything. So, um, yeah, she brought him on the road. And we did our thing. It was a little awkward at most times. <laughs> you know, like, I had to do a show with him. Um, right. You know, Tori walks in. I had to do, like, bedroom scenes. <laughs> a little odd that I had to kiss, make out with Tori and her father in the same day. <laughs> <laughs> no. oh, but um, you get along. You get along with him though. Nice guy. Ah, oh, super nice guy. Super nice guy. What a great sport. He was. He was all in. He was like yeah, whatever. And Vince, you, <laughs> and we would be out behind, you know, being gorilla. And um, Vince would be like, "Dawn, like what? I want to see tongue." <laughs> oh my god you know and it's like right there girl and you're like okay <laughs> you know, what do you do so I went out there and stuck my tongue in his mouth <laughs> he's like I want to see he's always awesome. oh, say that to me but I'd walk out the curtain but uh yeah it, you know, it is what it is it's the wrestling business it's right. not ballet, right? No, you can't. You can't make out with a woman and her father the same day if you're a ballerina. I don't think. At work. At There's work, yes. On there. <laughs> Something, yeah. I want to read a quote that Tori said recently, if you don't mind. Uh, you're involved in it. It says, um, it's "Tori talking about the bikini contest." It says, "They were all mortifying. People don't realize." I went out there and owned it the best I could and pushed through the fears, but it was mortifying. There were times when I remember specifically a house show that I was in a bikini showdown with Dawn Marie and Sable and someone else. I was standing in the corner watching one of the girls dance in the middle and literally fighting back tears. I mean, wow. Like, I cannot believe I'm doing this right now because it was getting a little raunchy point. And I'm like, I don't want to be part of this. I guess she was talking about me. But guilty. is that guilty? Guilty. But like, was did she seem like she was mortified to do bikini contests for you? I mean, no, it wasn't the offspring of Ricky Steamboat. <laughs> I mean, well, it's like that. Reason, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, Go on. If if I'm hired to be, because I'm a great chef. If I come to your home, you expect me to cook for you, correct? Yeah. Okay, so if you're hired because you look great in a bikini, I don't understand what the issue would be about being in a bikini, but yeah. I'm not. That'd be before she went to eat to, before she went to WWF. Say again. She didn't wrestle at WCW before she went to no. WWF. So it's not like they hired her to be a wrestler. Right? Yeah, we learned, and we, I mean, we were, we worked really well together, you know, um, we had a great in-ring relationship and respect. We both grew as talent together, you know, which was really nice, 
you know, there were times when I needed a little extra help and there were times when she needed a little extra help out there, but there was this, I got you. Right. And we got through it. But at the end of the day, you know, they weren't booking, you know, Malenko against steam, you know, steamboat. <laughs> you no, know, it was, you're going to get stripped. You're the TNA. We weren't doing like solid matches like Trish and Lita. They were totally like, you know, <laughs> here, you know, it, we were who we were. So, I mean, I'm not putting down either of our athletic ability or how we grew as wrestlers through our time there because we worked very, 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 very hard, you know? Um, but, you know, my character was raunchy. My char That's my character. You know, it's like she was the girl from Idaho, the sweet, you know, straw, you know, hay in her mouth, you know, like sitting mm -hmm. on a taxi girl, you know, like she's that whole wholesome girl. I was not. I can't go out there in my character and go, hi, it don't work. Yeah, right. A baby face is only as good as their heel. Right. You have to hate someone in order to like someone. Right? It's not really yeah. the other way around. It's not you have to like someone to hate someone in the ring. It doesn't work like that. You have to hate someone to put over your baby face. That's what a heel's job is. Right? And that was my job. I walked the line, but my whole career was walking the line. Even when I was at ECW, it's like, here's the line, you know, and right. you went, but that was my whole career. That's who they hired. Right. But she never came in the back. She never talked to you and said, I'm not comfortable doing these bikini shit, uh, matches, right? No. <laughs> no. No. Got it. I mean, and I like Tori. I have respect for Tori. I'm not saying anything bad. Wait, could you see me? Okay. I'm not saying anything bad about her. Um, I respect her, you know? But you did Playboy. What's the difference? I mean, some people say it's different. Okay. Maybe it is. I didn't do Playboy. But I have taken my clothes off for a living. You know, uh, you know, I was a stripper for many years before I became a wrestler. So, listen, you are who you are. I knew I was good. I'm a good person. I'm a loyal person. I would never hurt anyone purposefully. Never. You know me for years. I'm not a, a, an angry, vengeful type of person where I want to I, don't, I think it takes too much energy. So I wasn't being raunchy to be raunchy to like make someone uncomfortable. I was being raunchy because that's who my character was. You know, it is what it is. I didn't ask her to do it. Right. You know, I did it. Which only puts over her wholesome even more because I'm being so disgusting. Makes sense. Some holes where who's going to be the raunchier? That's not what that was about. It was about bad and good. You know that balance. That's that's all that story was about. You know it is yeah. what it. Is. But you know, I, I apologize if I ever made her feel uncomfortable. It was never my intention, ever. Um, I had a very wonderful, beautiful career. And it was a, a majority was because of her, you know, and her willingness. But so I never did it to do anything bad or to make someone uncomfortable. 
nor would I have not done it, even if she came to me and said something. <laughs> 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 I would have right. given a nation. <laughs> like, okay. I mean, listen, WWF, they've given birth to matches such as Royal Rumble, Elimination Chamber, Hell in a Cell, but, but who could ever forget stepmom versus stepdaughter at the Royal Rumble, right? Now, that's a that's a stipulation match right there, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. First, and I'll tell you, I was such a mark for myself that day. Oh, God, I was such a mark. When, um, when I did the wedding with her dad, because, you know, mm -hmm. Like that's like huge for us. As a, I don't know, as a girl, like I was like, oh my god, I'm one of the ones that could get married, like do the whole that's thing. Because awesome. you, know, you think about Miss Elizabeth and right, do it a lot. So I was just so psyched. I was like, <laughs> it was really cool. And um, I would say that's one of the coolest moments. And I got to work at Mula. And May. Oh, that's right. I was going to ask you about that. Moon and May Young. Talk to me about them. Oh, my God. <laughs> you want to talk about a mark? Dude, I, <laughs> I would have licked their feet if they wanted me to. <laughs> you know, so like they would be in the back. And, you know, I, I was about to be respectful. I wasn't being like annoying. Maybe not. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Mula liked me. And it may did, but Mula, like, she kind of took to me a little bit. And um, I think she just kind of knew, like, I was being polite and professional, but I was also being very respectful because I knew who she was, right? Oh. And, a lot of the, and a lot of the girls there probably didn't. Um, they're not historians. <laughs> right. You know, I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just saying right. I came, you know, I came up with you. Right. You know, I drove, I didn't get in because I, I, I worked the indies. I did the work, you know, did I get lucky pretty quickly? Like, was I three, four years in? Yeah. But I did put the work in, you know? And so, I don't know, a lot of them didn't know, they weren't students of the business. Right. I was raised to be student of the business. Right. You know who's coming up, you know who's coming in, you know who's on their way out, you know who does this because you don't want to be disrespectful and do something similar. You, there were codes and rules and respect. Right. And it wasn't always like that, you know, they tried some, you know, but it just, I was fortunate. I came from a different place. That's all. So, yeah. So May and Mula. Oh my God. So I had to do the tag match. It was me and Tori against May and Mula. And we're in the ring and May, uh, Mula goes, I want you. When we break off, I, you and me to me i was like oh. <laughs> and i was like oh, yes and then bubba comes over to me and he goes what in the hell did you do that she's calling you out what did you do that's so disrespectful <laughs> she kick your ass <laughs> i'm like no 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 she's no. not <laughs> Wait, I anything and you're like oh my god what am i gonna get in your own head but i he couldn't believe it that she just wanted to work with you know she was yeah. too to work with but that was like really an honor that's like really really a huge honor to me to be able to say i did that it wasn't a five-star wrestling match you know and gone not because of them probably because it's more <laughs> <laughs> be able to do it right you know, did it you know it yeah. was really awesome and i met wendy rector the other day for the first time i had her on she's been on the show oh my god i think i sound like a huge mark but we're all marks aren't we all marks we all, oh gosh I, 
I, I go to Tommy's 80s con to work the event. I, you know how many selfies I take? Are you kidding me? I know. Like, I don't know. We're all, that's why we do it. Yeah. The days of, oh, oh, I'm not taking pictures. That's long gone. I, I'm taking pictures of everybody. That's long gone. So all these years, I've never run into Wendy Rector. Never. And I did my first show. I did an appearance recently um, in Philly. I haven't done anything in 14 years. It was my wow. first appearance in 14 years. Wow. Did it. And Wendy was there. I was like, I'll go stand in line. I don't care. <laughs> I have to meet the queen. <laughs> you know? And I would say her and meeting Hulk were my two most embarrassing moments. Okay. Parking out. Okay. Like just <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> You know, just bump, you know. And, uh, but she respected it. She, she was laughing. She actually got up. She came out from behind her table. She was, she was very respectful. She knew that it wasn't, she knew I was respecting her. Right. But I also brought George Tahinos with me because I wanted a really good picture with her. Nice. I didn't, I don't know. <laughs> I was like, nice. <laughs> nice. So, yeah, I got that. And so that was good. And Hulk, he was a funny story, Hulk. First time I ever met him was, um, what was that group that Jimmy Hart was doing with Hulk? And the Hogan and Friends tour? No. Oh, the- um... It was a company. Yeah, 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 oh gosh. A- I know what you're talking about. Like Brian Nobbs. I don't know what it was. Something, something. And yeah, it was like yeah. Dean Oakland and Piper was there. Right. You know, you know I made a fool of myself with Piper too. Those are only three. But I think those are. I, 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 hold on. It was two. It was two. Now it's three. I bet if we keep going, we're going to find a few more people you were a fool with. But that's just, <laughs> just throwing it out there. Piper, forget it. I was going to be Mrs. Piper one day. <laughs> you know. Um, so we were at that show and it's the first time I ever met Hulk and I was there with Johnny Swinger and Pat Simon and we're walking to go to Gorilla and there's Hulk <laughs> I started to my Dawn da, 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 da. so when I did that I'm like hi my name is Dawn it's very nice to meet you know whatever he goes Dawn I'm a fan of your work. Wow. I almost feel stupid saying it out loud. Wow. I'm like, come on, he's just trying to have sex with me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I guess he saw the look on my face. I was like, oh, thank you. And he goes, no, I really am. He goes, I watch your stuff at ECW. And he started telling me things oh, wow. that I've done. I was like, a, oh, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And then I, I had to go, and I go, it was a meet the pleasure you. <laughs> you know, because I got to sell it. Like, I was just so mortified. Yeah. And laughing, and I was like, oh. I turned around. I used to pleasure play. you. That's great. <laughs> That's a, the first time I met Ray Mysterio. Uh, the first time I went to him, I, I don't know why, but for some reason I was just nervous to meet Ray Mysterio. And this was in WCW where he wasn't a big star. He was just, but for for me, I like? was nervous. Yeah, I yeah. went up to him and I said, I said, "Hi, Mike. I'm Ray." I go, "I mean, hi, Ray. I'm Mike." Uh, right? No, I, I, never mind. I, I literally just walked away. I walked away. <laughs> Ray's so good. And he used to be part of my travel team. Oh, yeah? Bro, yeah. Our travel group, oh, we were bad. It was me, Nydia, Ray, Rikishi, 
Chuck Palumbo. Uh, Zivon. Sometimes Coyote would come in. Um, we were, and, and, and uh, Albert sometimes would come hang out with us. But we, we were like, me and Nydia were the boys, right? Like we hung, like we were like the only two girls that were allowed to go out with them. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, and um, that was our travel group every week. That was our group. And we traveled all over together. It was, it was really nice. Ray's a good guy. I can't believe his son. Oh, no. No. More. Yeah. That's crazy. I can't. <laughs> old. I remember right. when I was born. Right. It's insane. We didn't. Uh, we haven't talked Sable, Sable yet. How did you get along, with Sable? Oh, I love her. She was like one of my best friends on the road. You know. Um, of course, you know, I have nothing but respect. I knew my place. I was fine with it. You know? Um, we became very, very, very good friends. Very good friends. We used to travel together sometimes. Um, <laughs> she's so funny. Yeah, you wouldn't think she is, right? But she really is. And um, the one funny story I have about Sable we were traveling and we were lost. You know, we're always lost, right? Because we, we didn't have GPS back then. We had a map. Drive down these roads and, and mountains and, you know, you're waiting to see. Maybe you get it to see a sign so maybe you could find where it is and you figure out where you are. And she had to go to the bathroom so bad. She had to go to the bathroom so bad. I was just like, oh, I gotta go. We gotta stop. We gotta I'm like, there's nothing anywhere. It was just fields and fields and fields. Finally, she's like, I don't care, Joan. You got to stop. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go right here. Sable. Right? Most perfect woman. <laughs> and I'm like, really? She's like, yeah, yeah. I got to go. I, I, gotta, I can't hold anywhere. I got to go. I got to go pee. So all of a sudden, I pull over. She starts peeing. I look up. It's a cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> like you know it was like the old school cemetery so it was like there was some grass right where we pulled off and then it was like the church a steeple and then it was like an old cemetery like sitting back and I go oh you're going you're going to hell great right now <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So she great. great. And then she met Brock and he hit her from the world. <laughs> Any stories with Brock? You know, Brock didn't like me because when before Rena was there, right? He he had told a few people that he wanted to hook up. I was with Chuck at the time, but no one really knew because back then you kept everything secrets. Chuck. Palumbo. Oh, I never knew that. I never knew that. Yeah, yeah. Well, nobody did. <laughs> they all thought it, but no one knew, you know, because you kept it. Not like now. You got, you got fired for that as a girl back then. And so I was like, oh, yeah, no. Nah. But even if I was, like, he's not my type. Brock, he's just not my thing. And I just, he was offended. I don't know. So then he just did, like, did, kind of didn't like me, but he wasn't mean or anything. Just nothing. And then Rena came, you know, and they fell in love, and that's wonderful. I'm happy for them. But I think he never wanted me to tell, he was so afraid of me telling her that he wanted to hook up. You know, that he was interested. Well, why would I do that? Nothing ever happened. Right. Why would I hurt my friend like that? Like, it, it, neither one of us did anything wrong. But for some reason, he wanted me far away from her. 
you know. I was supposed to go to their wedding. He threw out my invitation. <laughs> yeah, I was supposed to go to their wedding. I was supposed to be in the wedding. And uh, Raina called me. She's like, don't I, you never RSVP. Like, are you coming? I'm like, yeah, I got tickets. What are you talking about? I was like, I didn't get an invitation. I just figured you know I was coming. And she was like, oh, no. And I go, what? She goes, I gave them to Brock drop off at the post office after she made them all. She goes, I bet you he threw them out. And I was like, that's horrible. Isn't that horrible? Mm. That's horrible. And she's like, oh God. And she's like, you, you know, I do want you to come. I go, you know, you know, this is it's not only your day, it's his day too. Right. And I'm not going to show up to his day. He doesn't want me there. That's fine. You know, what am I going to do? But I never talked to her again. He wouldn't, I never talked to her another day after that. No, I lost my friend. But mm. We're not dead yet. But there's a lot of conversations going on in that house right about now too, with everything going on in the, in the media. <laughs> You might, you might, something tells me, Dawn, you might be here from her pretty soon. You might. You know, the first thing I thought when I heard, when it was like breaking, he may be involved. I was like, oh, that motherfucker, he's a prison. He's, I know he's in, neck deep. Because if you, if, if, that's just Brock, you know, right. a little rough around the edges, right? It just is who he is. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying, yeah, there's fire there at that smoke. <laughs> but mm. you knew. Right. Then I was like, oh my God. I said, what years were these? I was like, it was Arena. It's like, that son of a bitch. Like, <laughs> what? What? She's such a good woman. Like she's just the nicest person, you know. And she's dedicates her whole life. She dedicated her whole life to him. She just disappeared. She went into the mountains, had babies. I, I it it makes me not like him more. You know. I don't say I don't like him. I don't have respect. Right. You know, I don't have any anger towards him. It's just sort of like, all right, he threw out my invitation. It's kind of weak. You know, you took my friend away from me. Why? Because of right. whatever. Like, that's stupid. But now, it's like she gave up her whole life for him. Like, she had a career, a whole career. Right. And she doesn't now. And, you know, does that? Come on. It just goes to show. Cheating, when you have someone cheat on you, it has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with you. It's all about them. Here's Rena, the most beautiful woman in the world. Right? Gorgeous. Inside and out. It doesn't matter. You know, you're either a cheater or you're not. <laughs> it has nothing to do with you. So anyone watching, you had someone cheat on you, don't worry about it. It wasn't you. It was them. They did you a favor. <laughs> do we have Do we have time? Do you have like five, ten more minutes? Yeah. Awesome. Can we just do like a, a rapid fire? I'll just mention a name. Just tell me the first thing that comes to your head when I mention some people. Awesome. Uh, Trish. We never talked about Trish. Hard worker, much respect. Lita. That's my girl. That's my girl. Her and I go way back, you know, and uh, yeah. She's that person that will go to the front line with you. Even if she knows you're wrong. You know, she is. She's tough, she's a tough girl. 
real tough girl. I know her from ECW. That's right. Uh, Triple H. I don't really know. Uh, uh, one of those things you stay away from the boss's husband when you're half naked all the time and you just act like a slut. You know, it's just kind of like, oh, job security. <laughs> Maybe I shook his hand twice. I, I don't really know him. Undertaker? Undertaker. You know, he's a good guy. Like, he knows, he respects those who respect. Right? I have a funny Undertaker story. I did something really, I don't know what I did. I pissed someone off. Who knows what you do, right? Because they don't tell you, they just punish you. And they kept sending Bob Holly into the ring to spank me. Like three days in a row, house shows. The last day, he smacked my ass so hard, it literally popped. The skin broke. Because, you know, three days of it, right? So Taker, I'm coming through the curtain, and there's Taker. Leaning up against him, he's like, God. I'm like, yeah. He goes, how was it? It was fine. It's great. He goes, sure? I said, take it. I don't know. I picked someone off, but the match was great. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what I did. I probably deserved it. I picked someone off along the line, but I probably deserved it. <laughs> and he started laughing. He's like, okay, that's enough. <laughs> like, that was like, Right. I don't think, all right. I didn't cry about it. I didn't, you know. Right. And um, he's 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 a, he's a good guy. Had many drinks with him. We used to go to the bar, all of us afterwards. He's he's a good guy. He's a good guy. Solid. Nice. He's solid. You know. Nice, Sean. I don't know Sean. I know he's married to one of the most beautiful women in the world, but no, I don't really know Sean. I met him. I don't even think I've ever even shook his. I, I've never been in the same space oh. as him. No. Uh, Booker T. <gasps> Booker. You know what? Booker's one of those people that if someone has something bad to say about Booker, like you look at them and go, "What's wrong with you?" <laughs> He's so pleasant. He looks a hard worker. He's a great husband, great family man. He's always respectful. Always. Always a gentleman. I saw him the other day at that appearance. I was like, what the heck is Charmel feeding you? Because you're more handsome today than you were years ago. <laughs> like, what is going on? You know, he's just, like, he's just a really, he's a good guy. I'm so happy he's with Charmel. I'm so happy. Yeah. Nice. Solid guy. Good good man. Good man. JBL. JBL. I enjoy JBL. JBL didn't always enjoy me. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, he's old school. Right? And he's going to make you go through your paces. He's going to test you. He's going to mm. push you. going to test you. I was one of the girls. I hung out with the boys. That's unheard of. Right? You don't do that. Um, you know, I would try to, like, break in, break some conversation with him about stock market and, like, just try to, like, have some common ground. We would very minimal talk. Um but as the year, as the time went on, he respected me. You know, I talk to him to this day. Um, you know, it's so weird how things happen. He was never rude or cruel to me. Right. Well, you know, you, he doesn't have to actually literally go out and do something. You just know. <laughs> you know right. I mean? But, um, yeah, you know, it's about earning your respect, earning your spot. Earning your place. That's all it's about. Right. I have no problem doing that. I should. You know, I should. 
Eddie Guerrero? Oh my God. I cry just thinking about him. Oh. He was such a kind man. And listen, I don't know him in his past. I just know him from when I knew him. Like, I don't know the crazy wild side. I know the God-fearing, kind person that is respectful and wants to help you, right? That, that, that's, and I was, I was struggling a little bit when I was on the road, you know, it's just like, it was just so seedy. And I was really having a hard time. I was starting to have a little hard time. And um, I don't know how I started talking to him about it. And I was like, he's like, well, do you have a Bible? And I was like, no, I need, I need to. I need to like get more closer to like, I need to be more grounded. Like I knew it. Like, I didn't feel myself in my own, feel good in my own skin kind of thing. Right. And I got one. He said, bring it. I said, I'll get one. He's like, okay. And, you know, he would sit down and talk to me. We would, he would like read it with me. And he would take the time to teach me. Um, yeah. So, I mean, he's just a wonderful man. The man I know. I don't know what he was before. You know, I can't imagine him being not. I don't know. But that that was a hard one. That was a hard one, you know? But he was always very kind. He actually went up to bat for me. He went to Johnny Ace. He told Johnny Ace off for me one day because um, I don't know, I did something wrong. Oh, I remember what I did. I got into a bar fight. With who? I did. With who? I don't know. <laughs> Just a, a random woman at a bar? No. Like we used to always hang out, right? Okay. We, we were the group. Like people would come to us and be like, "Hey, what are we doing tonight? <laughs> you know, what's everyone doing tonight?" It was our little clique. So we went to a bar. It was in Louisville or Nashville, somewhere down there. We're all drinking. Me, Nydia, Chuck, Ray, Kishi, Albert, Kyoto. We're all done. And, you know, Ray's so cute. He's a, you know, cute. He's handsome, but he's cute, right? So, Kyoto grabs his girl's butt. And when she turns around, he goes, like it was Ray. And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> he's so cute. You know, Ray's little dimples. So now Ray does it. It goes to Kyoto. It's a different girl. Just luck of the draw. The girl gets offended. She goes, gets her boyfriend and his friends. They come back. Now there's a bar fight. The boys are fighting. Right? Everything breaks up. And I'm just looking at the whole landscape. I'm standing next to Nidia and I'm like, is that the girl? that started this because she was so proud of herself she was like all oh, these men are fighting over me and you could right. just see it like she was so smug mm -hmm. i was like nick is that the girl that she goes yeah i go oh okay and i walk by her and i'm like Bam! oh no <laughs> right got it right in the button and they were like, oh, no. And we got into this big, um, can you see? Yeah. yeah. So, like, I'm oh, done. That's it. Let's go. They, like, drag us out. We all left. And um, I got in a lot of trouble for that. But my theory is this. This is, like, because Eddie said, he's like, what are you doing? Take her to. I was like, listen. I'm one of the boys. One of the boys can't hit a girl. I'm out with the boys, right? 
if someone did something to me, they're going to be right on it. Right? So, like, she's a girl. I have to do it. That was my mentality back then. You know, he's just, I was like, oh. oh. <laughs> Yeah, it was fun. I had a good time. A lot of fun. Last name Stephanie McMahon. I have a lot of respect for Stephanie. Stephanie taught me so much. You know, Stephanie's a, an amazing heel. I mean, she could turn you to go out. Yeah, and then, they're like jumping out their seat at her. Right. And I was really fortunate because she liked my character, you know, it was just right up her alley kind of thing. And she would take me to the side and we would talk it over and she would give me so much advice to be able to like turn on and all, you know, get them to turn and this and that. And I was like, so grateful. How do you get an education like that? Right. 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 I mean, I had, you know, Paul Heyman, Lance Storm, Shane Douglas, Simon, when I was at ECW, then when I went to WWE, I had, we had uh, Benoit and, and Malenko and, and Guerrero, they were always in the ring teaching us, you know, we had Arn, Arn would be in the ring with us, you know, I remember one time we had to do tag match, like teaching us the psychology of tag match, like what? Right, Wow. What? <laughs> you know, like, where do you get that? Right. You know, it's Finley, and it was just a different era, you know, and um, I was very lucky. I was very lucky. I had a really a lot of good people in my corner, such as yourself. Really? Yeah, no, it was. It was. You know, oh. you know, when I first started, I had you. I had Chris. You know, you guys would push for me and get me on shows, right? We had Tommy Fierro. Like, I love Tommy. Tommy gave me my first couple shows. Like, he believed in me when nobody did. You know, like, how did I get so lucky? How? You know, no, I'm serious, though. Like, I mean that. Like, why me? Sometimes I sit back, I'm like, what? You know, I was homeless. I lived in my car when I was 17 years old. I didn't come from a great place. So why did it all change? Like, why Why me? Why Why did I get all that those blessings? Like, it's amazing to me. Wow. You know, I'm very, yeah. so grateful. It was a, a very, a life well lived. You know? That's great. Wow. You got a lot more living. You got beautiful kids and a and a great career and you're left the business you're one of the success stories dawn you really are thank you i hope so you know the one thing i do miss is that i never you know our goal is always to by the time you're ready to leave the business you want to be able to change it in a positive way Right, it's not about the money. It, it, right. But yeah, money's great. Like, you can make money anywhere. Money, you know, money's whatever. You make it anywhere. We're all hustlers. We all know how to make a dollar. <laughs> hey, <laughs> like you want the end of your career to be mean something. How did I change a business in a positive way? Right. What is my right? And I do feel that like I was not able to pass the torch as so many did to me. So many people pass the torch to me. So many. And I just feel like I have never had the honor to honor those people by passing it to the next person. You know? And that upsets me. But that's the only thing that upsets me. Anything else I'm very happy with. You know, just like that, the period at the end. 